I may have just erased an entire SD card of vlog footage, so, um, if I did, it's done at this point, but here's the card that's supposed to be in the camera, so if you're wondering how things are going. Okay, so today we're gonna Jones that road. We're gonna sissy that walk. Today we're going to be playing with some new stuff, mainly from Jones Road Beauty, because everyone remains curious about Jones Road Beauty, which is good, because I like what they're doing. It's kind of this like health food for your face kind of aesthetic, starting with, well, it started out with a handful of products that didn't involve a foundation, but the what the foundation made quite a controversial splash over on, over on the TikToks with the youths. But the main thing we're gonna be talking about today is these two, well, it's the bronzers that came out. I found it interesting that they decided to put out powder bronzers because everything in their line is so sticky, you know? In fact, hold please, hold please. They sent over the Miracle Balm in Miami Beach, which is their new shade. Anyway, I also have some other stuff here from Flavado and Albedo, a new kind of indie brand on my radar and we're just gonna try and put something cute together. That's what we're gonna do. We're gonna try and put something cute together and feel cute, and I'm going to mainly give you all my thoughts on Jones Road Beauty and these bronzers. That's the main thing that's going to happen today. So let's go ahead and jump in. Wow, wow, wow! I look how I feel! March is treating me a lot like February. I'm gonna start here with the, it's not the Miracle Bomb, it's the What the Foundation, and I have it in Porcelain. And a lot of people find this to be detestable because it's got, you know, the little globs of oil that have to break down, and it has like a more skincare vibe to it than makeup, and. It just requires a little bit of suspension of disbelief while it's happening, but I think that it's worth it. I like it a lot. I like what it looks like when I wear it. I like how my skin feels when I wear it. Although the little, the little chunks are kind of a booby trap, I'll be honest. Like sometimes I'll catch myself in the mirror and I'm like, oh no, there's a chunk that didn't break down. And like, that's not, there's a chunk in my hair. That's not a thing I ever have to worry about with other foundations. Yeah. Oh my gosh, y'all. My skin is so dry on the inside of my nose. I just like rubbed that into my nose. Oh, it just like all cracked right here. Oh my God, that makes me wanna like crawl out of my body. I hate that so much. Okay, so what's great about this, <laughs> it kind of does what the Mac, see, globs. It kind of does what the Mac face and body does. I need to get closer. Moves entire desk. It goes on soupy and then it grips. So as you're kind of rubbing it in, you feel it, you feel it grip a little bit. Grip it and rip it. But you know, it's like you kind of gotta do a little bit of due diligence to make sure that it's not looking a little sloppy, you know? Do I not have a towel? I cleaned this room and it just always ends up being something that backfires. Two updates, by the way, that came either from my comments or elsewhere. One, there is a brand called Lixer, L-I-X-R, that was founded by the original founders of Bite Beauty and the developer of the original Agave lip balm that everybody loved. And apparently they have now put out their own lip balm. And that is the follow-up sequel to our discussion on reformulation of theglossierbalm.com and trying to find something that works that well. So I'll be trying that, but I wanted to let y'all know in advance of that too. And I wanted to let y'all know that Fortuna Skin has put out a makeup remover balm that is just absolutely lovely if you're just like a, you know, luxury skincare junkie like I am. The main thing that I like about it is it's actually intended to just be like a one step, which is cool, you know? Like, I find that I can just wash my face with it. I kind of mix a little bit of water with it and wash my face with it, so it's like I don't have to double cleanse if I don't want to. It's pretty cool. So, wanted to include that. I will link those below, but if the skincare aspect of it is the appeal to you and you can get past the potential hazard of chunks in your makeup, <laughs> might have you saying, what the foundation? Um, it might be for you. And it comes in glass. You get 
a whole bunch of product. Nope, that's not that much. You get 0.8 ounces. It just feels like a lot because you don't use that much and it's in glass, so it's really heavy. I also have, they sent a couple of the face pencils and I had owned the face pencil before. I liked it and then they sent some more. I still like them. This is shade one and I have shade two just like knocking around in my purse because it's a fantastic thing to carry with you. You're checking yourself in like the passenger side flip down mirror of truth and you see, you know, God knows what <laughs> peeking back at you, pull that bad boy out of your purse and you just camouflage that. You just camouflage that right away. So yeah, I really dig this thing. I also got one from Cheekbone Beauty that is very similar and I like it also, although I'm not sure I got as good of a shade match. This comes in a ton of shades, which is cool. Like I can wear one and two absolutely interchangeably. I will say that's like something that has been, it's left something to be desired in the Jones Road releases so far is just that the shade ranges have been pretty incomplete. I mean, yes, the bronzers don't go particularly deep. That's one big criticism that I have, but also like, it just feels a little bit random. It does feel like there's just a lot of undertones kind of catered to, and then just like a lot of really random ones just skipped. And like watching Hannah try the What the Foundation, Hannah Louise Poston, she's, you know, super, super fair and like a desaturated kind of, you know, pale olive. She, there's just no shade for her. And so I think that, you know, especially with something this sheer, they don't need to add a whole menagerie more shades. They just probably need to flesh it out a little bit more, as it were. But yeah, it's just, there's not enough currently. Ooh, 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 I've got, I'm not gonna show that, I'll get demonetized. I've got a spot of like either eczema or psoriasis behind this ring. Typically I would just switch it to the other hand, but instead I have used my ring to occlude the steroid that's under there so that it doesn't like come off, but it works, but it's definitely not advisable. I would say that my doctor would probably be like, don't do that, you're gonna burn your finger off. But guess what? Worse things have happened recently. No, I just, this, I know, I know, I know. You know, there are a lot of people who come to my, I shouldn't apologize for it. There are plenty of people who come to my channel for the astrology chats. So, man, uh, Pisces, uh, the Pisces energy of it all has just, I feel personally victimized, but at the same time I look around and I don't think it's personal. I think it's pretty universal at this point. And then my battery died at that exact moment. The ghost of Pisces passed. But we have the Sun in Pisces, Saturn in Pisces, Neptune in Pisces. It's just a lot. It's a lot of Pisces. And Pisces is pretty feelsy and Neptunian already. So <laughs> the feelings that I'm revisiting have caused me to just like not even be able to get out of bed lately. So um, who doesn't want their skin to look like that? I think that that's worth it. And I'm sure that there is a, a good way as I, you know, would use it more to warm up the what the foundation in my hands and like break up all those little clumps. <laughs> it's like not something that you really want. It's like hard to make excuses for it when we're talking about makeup, but it just feels so good. I like want to leave it just like that because as soon as we get into these powder products, it does feel like a departure from the face granola of it all. You know, it just feels like we're getting into cosmetics where this feels like Oh, this old thing, it just happens to be some like really flattering tinted skincare. It's really comfortable to wear. My skin is really like, it looks supple and happy and rested. And I have to say like, if you're a fan of these and you're wondering like how these two things are supposed to go together, I don't have a great answer for you. Like I'm still wondering too, cause I've tried to apply this on top of this I wouldn't recommend it. Like it's possible, but I wouldn't recommend it. And then, you know, this is, if you're unfamiliar with the Miracle Bomb, something I learned recently, is that the, a lot of them, like they're different from each other. I originally had Dusty Rose, I think is what I had. And it's not 
pigmented enough. And then Hannah was trying some of them on her channel, Hannah Louise Poston, and she was talking about how she liked some more than others because of the pigmentation level or whether or not it had shimmer in it or whether like some of them felt thicker than others. And I wish that they would clarify that when you're shopping for it because I think that that's very valuable. Like I truly said that like I didn't like the Miracle Balm and that I thought it was gross because I tried one that like didn't show up on my skin and was kind of gross. But this, oh my word. And actually I need to pull out the dupe that I bought first. So it's pretty obvious that Revolution Beauty was trying to dupe this with their latest release, but you know, only in so far as it comes in a tin and it's a balm blush because A, I mean, it's a lot smaller, but B, it smells like, mm, like Pez. They didn't tell me they were sending me this. I asked them to send the bronzers because they had sent me like one round of PR before that. I was like, hey, can I get the bronzers? That would be cool. And they obliged, which, you know, I, I really appreciate. But when they sent this, I was like, well, I'm, I'm glad I can compare these two things because I clearly bought this because I like the color so much. Like this is very much the color of like what I want to wear right now because I want healthy looking skin. And this just happens to be like a, a beautifully healthy breath of life kind of vibrant shade that looks nice on me. And I've been kind of leaning into like the apricot peach coral of it all lately. So it is more vibrant than the Miami Beach original shade here. And I have been very intuitively reaching for the Jones Road, stop it, the Jones Road and had completely forgotten about this one, to be honest. I mean, it's it's good, but it just doesn't have the like skincare feel good quality that the Miracle Balm does that I wanna wear on bare skin. There's something about the nuance of that color where it has a little bit more neutrality to it that makes it so that like, <sighs> especially on the weekends where I'm planning on wearing no makeup at all, I will put that on like my cheeks and my nose, a little on my forehead, maybe a little on my lips. And I feel a million times more confident leaving the house because I look healthy. I wish that I could like apply this today, but I'm not sure that it's gonna happen because it doesn't communicate well with the powder products, the powder bronzers. But I wanna show you what it looks like when it shears out because it does still maintain a lot of pigment even when you shear it out completely. But it also does have visible shimmer particles in it, which doesn't bother me at all, but it does bother a lot of people. Like that's a kiss of death for a lot of people. So just be aware. I think it's really pretty, you know, and it's Miami Beach. It's supposed to be kind of that like a little better than reality sun kissed vibe. And I, I dig the crap out of it. I've been wearing it quite a lot, but I will say like, while this has changed my opinion on the Miracle Bombs in general, because I realized that they're not all the same, I do still think that this belongs in a very specific face of makeup or maybe on its own and doesn't necessarily like fit with an otherwise conventional makeup routine. Like it very much is like the Jones Road aesthetic. You kind of have to like buy into their process of putting on your makeup in order to enjoy this. You know, I don't think it's a bad thing, but if you're looking for versatility, I'm not sure that this it's like promising versatility, but they do have some beautiful actual blush sticks that do promise some versatility. I think we go in with bronzer now. So I'm gonna go ahead and swatch these against some of the things in my collection that you'd probably be curious about comparing, you know? So here we have the fairest shade, which actually is pretty much a blush. It's like a very desaturated blush tone in the shade Dusty Rose from Jones Road. And then the other one is called Light Tan. You know, they're very descriptive shades in this case. So Dusty Rose, Light Tan. This is the Gucci bronzer in 01. You know, I think that's just the fairest shade. And then this is, if you have it, I'm not sure if you can still get it. You might be able to find it a couple of places, but this is last summer's cheek and eye shade from Chantecaille Ray, which is another just like universal blushy bronzer that I like to wear. And then this one right here is the House Labs bronzer in light level one. So it is evident here that Dusty Rose is rosier 
than all of them. Ray comes closest, but you know, it is meant to go on cheeks and eyes. And so it does have that shimmer to it. And then honestly, like the Gucci has a little more rosiness than light tan from uh, Jones Road. But I mean, these are very, very similar in, you know, practical use. What might surprise you in terms of my impressions of these is actually that like this isn't my favorite. I really expected this to be such a standout star because most brands don't really have, I don't know whether it's guts or intuition or just the preference to put out a bronzer and call it a bronzer when it's this pink. And it does look like it's going to behave really beautifully on my skin. What surprised me is that they are so ultra pigmented. At least this one is. Like I put it on and I was like, dang, like I had a, I just have a hard time not stamping it on my face. So I am going to apply one to one side and one to the other and then I'll kind of, you know, apply like, you know, so you can see each one, but then I'll layer them so that it's even. But I'm gonna start with light tan because I actually like it better. For some reason, I just feel like it, do you see, woo, she wants to stamp. And it's because this is kind of, you know, a gummy face of makeup underneath. I shouldn't say it's gummy. It doesn't feel sludgy. It doesn't feel heavy at all, but it's almost kind of got like a primer tackiness to it. So this is going to work a lot better as you get like a layer of powder on it or something, you know? But I just wanna give you all the full experience of like what would happen if you were to combine Jones Road products with Jones Road products. So that's light tan. I love that color. I mean, obviously it is a very, very similar, almost, you know, hard to tell apart from the other two bronzers, the Gucci and the House Labs that I, you know, powder bronzers that I reach for the most. So here we have, I'm gonna be so careful. In fact, I don't even think that's the right brush. So I have a very clean Sigma Duo fiber here. It's not brand new. I just clean the living daylights out of it. I'm gonna try, ooh, see, I think it's just that like, it's a little dusty, so it picks up. Like it kicks up a lot, which is good because that means that it's not going to hard pan on you, but I'm really just like trying to see. Woo! It happens, it happens fast. And I think that it, again, I don't think it would happen that fast were I putting it on top of a powdered face of makeup. And we can do that in another video, you know, if that's like a request that y'all have. So I'm gonna kind of layer that on in a blushy area right there. So like front of the cheek with that same brush. And so you get to see the light tan versus the dusty rose. And then I'll put some of the light tan on. I just can't figure out why like light tan seems to just vibe more easily, you know? It's it's kind of interesting. Like it, it doesn't really kick up in the pan as much. It's like it's a different formula almost. Almost, not really, but like, it does still kind of want to stamp a little, but it's way, way easier for me to use. And it's just interesting to me that this being the palest shade, it's also the one that wants to kick up the most. So, blendy, blendy, but like, we're already in like way too much blush territory for like the amount of makeup that I'm wearing, you know? Like I already feel like I need to like come up to meet this with a bunch of other stuff because like, look at the color of my, my chest versus my cheeks. <sighs> it's just like not a place I wanna be already in this point in my, my makeup routine. So I do, I guess wanna do like a little bit of contour real quick to like, you know, try and pull this together because I feel like it's just really exaggerated on my cheeks and nowhere else. So I'm popping that on a 106 from BK. This is my Oma contour. I did just get, when I went to Kelly's in the city, Kelly Gooch, she gave me some stuff that, you know, shades that she wasn't gonna use of things that she had gotten in PR. And I got a, it's like a double-ended stick from a brand called Dibs Beauty. And it's a blush on one end and kind of a contour on the other. And so I'll be including that in a video soon too. It's really, it's really cute. So there we have the contour. I just think contour brings everything together. I do it very gently, you know? So that like, it's not something that you're gonna see a line. But I think that that's also the advantage of this one is that it's actually 
such a good creamy color, but it's also a lot of like pigment. So you don't have to apply very much, but it goes on really evenly in a believable color. And I have a ton of shades. So you can see my under eyes are like, ah, kind of glowing right now. I feel like that's mainly going to be alleviated by powder. You know, it's not necessarily a like coverage issue. It's just more of like a texture reflection of light issue. So not hating this, but I do feel like we lost the magic of Jones Road. I could achieve this color with Maple from Salt New York. Like this is such an ideal color for me to look really healthy. It's the formula that kind of gets in the way with the Jones Road that makes it really hard to get little enough of it on. But it's gonna stay. There's something to be said for that because it's a powder, you know, it's going to probably wear for longer. Whereas like the Salt New York, you know, I don't expect it to wear for like 10 hours or something, but it's definitely not a beginner level in terms of the ease of use of combining the new bronzer with your maybe pre-existing collection of Jones Road products. Like I would still, definitely recommend using something like this on top of the wet the foundation before the bronzers. The bronzers are more for people who like, uh, maybe the wet the foundation didn't really appeal to you and you're just looking for some interesting colors that don't exist in other bronzer lines for fair skin. That's, I feel like who this is going to appeal to more and they're very pretty for that. That's where we're going to like leave the cheeks for now. I might pull out a blush, but like a kind of, ugh, we'll see where we end up on the eyes. So I'm going to start by prepping my eyes with the Hindash Color Fluid and Canvas. I have just found that this, without doing anything else, it, you know, it doesn't get in the way, it doesn't change the grip or anything. It just evens out the color of my eyes and makes all the eyeshadows that I put on just look so much better. So you can see, you know, We've killed most of the creasing by doing that and given just a nice even canvas and it feels fussy. It just feels like kind of a, an extra step, but to me, it, it takes so little time and it makes such a difference that it does still feel like it belongs in, you know, a low key look like this. So these are from Flavado and Albedo. The name might ring a bell if you watched my Instant Holy Grails video because they sent through a blue one also, but Blue is just not always the color that I go straight for with my eyes because it does a really good job of like complementing my skin tone, but it doesn't really do a good job layering on top of it. It kind of goes muddy and weird and makes my eyes glow red. So all that to say, I am going to start in with these. And honestly, I might just go with my finger because these have just a really beautiful kind of like emollients to them. They feel like the House Labs bronzers. They have that like suede feeling to them that's really, really remarkable and lovely. And they come in tins, which I think is fun. Like, look how cute. Look how freaking cute these little tins are. Ooh, the way that they grip on your finger when you're swatching them. Like, they really do. They feel just like that gel powder formula. So here are the three that I'm gonna be using today from here. So this one on the bottom is called Cool, cool Bronze. Again, we're in descriptive names, not, you know, not named after like your friend or something. So cool bronze is a cool bronze. Hazelnut, that's a hazelnut color. And then this one is called rose quartz. So it does, it has that nice, I mean, I have rose quartz in my ear right now. So you be the judge. So these are very much like in line with the boring vibes that I am, I'm into right now, beautifully boring. And I, you know, use that as a compliment. I love reliable things that are right in my comfort zone. I want makeup that makes me feel like I'm wrapped in a blanket and drinking a Swiss Miss, you know? So, oh, ugh. now that I've like articulated that to myself, cause I was just kind of like, I don't know, I was kind of riffing, but like realizing how similar those two formulas are, mad respect. Kind of also reminds me of the, the Lisa Eldridge shadows. They have that same kind of grippy quality, but they're smoother. So I'm just using hazelnut all over. It's such a pretty color, isn't it? Just as a good matte goes on fair skin. I mean, honestly, like anybody could wear this color, but it being darker than my skin tone, but still subtle and it's warm. 
you know, it's not making my eyes look like they're shrinking. So I'm going to take almost like a default brush, you know, BK202. It's just like a good blender brush. And I'm gonna dip it in there, work that up. Do you see how much more smooth my crease is though? <laughs> because I started with the Hindash Color Fluid. It's smoother than any primer I've ever used. I wouldn't necessarily call it a primer in the sense of it like gripping, you know? Like I don't, it's not necessarily something that I really want with this look anyway. I don't want this like really like vivid version of these colors. I like that they blend and sheer out, but just the super smooth consistency of the way that the color blends on that I'm not seeing all the, I don't know, like little imperfections in texture and stuff. Makes it a lot easier to see what the heck I'm doing when I don't have like super great eyesight to begin with. I don't know if I'm going to be able to resist getting into more like apricot-y colors on my eyes at some point in this, but for now, I'm going to, you know, same brush, I don't care. I'm gonna dip into rose quartz and just use that up here. And I'll also kind of sweet talk that right there on the inner corner, because I've already, used the color fluid to like get a nice even canvas as it were right there. And I just love the way that the light hits it. And then the fun part. I mean, not that this wasn't fun, but I mean, this is just like one of my favorite kinds of colors. And it's really satisfying to touch. It is a cool bronze. They're being honest about that. It is cooler toned than I would necessarily prefer, but it is still super, super pretty. Do you see? It's like a little bit more like taupe than it is bronze. It's giving phytosurgeons weathered woods. See how, I mean, I think that like it's a pretty color, but it kind of contrasts incorrectly in my mind against hazelnut because hazelnut is now warm and it's like warmth in my crease and now I have a cool tone on my lids and so it doesn't totally work you know, because it's kind of a reverse of what you would want. Because what I've been doing on my own is like pulling out things like the, you know, Patrick Ta Rose palette and just like bringing it together with like matte burgundies and stuff. That's not so bad. Blended together, not so bad. I'm just gonna take a little pencil brush. This is a 210 with the same hazelnut shade and just do a really soft blur on my lower lash line. Very pretty. I can't say that that's where I'm going to stop. I'm gonna keep kind of working hazelnut in here, get a little more opacity. I like how sticky it is though. All right, so like I said, <laughs> I'm not sure I'm gonna be able to stay away from including some apricot in this look. It's all looking a little bit brown at the moment. And it's mainly the fact that like, my eyes are giving cool tone. It's looking a little bit like watered down to me and I just want a little bit of pop. Especially because I think that in my heart, I'm just missing this. Oh my gosh, look, look at my face. And then I put this up and everything lights up. Did you see that? Like how my cheeks light up and like you start to see where all those colors are trying to exist on my face right now. And I'm just gonna push that. I'm gonna push that forward. So the fact that I can't really use this today without just completely sliming up my face and like pushing everything around, I'm actually gonna go in with the, not this khaki, this, the House Labs Pomelo Peach. Somebody, everybody says pomelo. I don't, let me see. Pomelo. Yep, the Wikipedia says it's pronounced pomelo. The American pronunciation is pomelo. I don't like that. Either way, pomelo peach from Mouse Labs, which is just the most intoxicating, like peachy pomelo kind of color, idiot. So I'm going to use that to like richen this a little bit, just a little, maybe a little more than a little because I'm gonna go in on my eyes too. I think also because there's such low coverage to the complexion products that I am wearing, it just kind of begs for a little bit more opacity on my cheeks. Everything just kind of looks a little bit like fuzzy because you see my skin through and like my eyes just aren't used to it. I'm gonna actually also powder my under eyes and a little bit around like my mouth and stuff with our guard dog, with our good friend, 
Natalie Natalie. And that's maybe going to make me feel like I don't have to work quite as hard on my eyes. I just don't want to end up like full glam. But to me, it's kind of like, I need to complete the chords. M rough. 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 Buff. Something that I have been using so much more than I ever expected to. I did have kind of hard feelings about this because the brown, you know, 25% of this doesn't really lend itself very well to my routine the way that I thought that it was going to because it, while the shift on it is a really nice warm brown, the base on it as it blends out is so cool toned. It's so dark. It's just so much darker than it looks like it's gonna be. It is like charcoal colored on me. It's so contrasty. This is my little Johnny Concert quad that I made and the rest of them off the charts. I use them constantly. And so this is this one right here, which is called Pacific Peach. Yeah. So I'm just gonna take a sample of your brush, dip, dip it in there. I really like this color. And kind of help out my local color up here a little. Bring it into a common vibe with the rest of my face. Yeah. And it just adds some life. Since the brown doesn't really work, the purple really does. <laughs> like it works really, really well for what I'm going for. It doesn't read purple necessarily. It just kind of pulls this like warmth out of my eyes a little bit more. Somebody sent me a video on Instagram the other day. Do you see that? It's like, you're not, you're not seeing pink purple. You're seeing like a, a more native colored depth. It like pulls from like my lip tone a little bit, but it just makes it look like it makes sense. It, like it's been addressed, you know? But yeah, somebody sent me a video on Instagram where somebody was actually like breaking down the way that like skin tones appear in paintings and stuff and like some of the colors that you that you think that the eye recognizes but when you actually pull them out of context it's not so much that something is like green as it is that it's been desaturated or something like that you know and like when you actually pull them out of context and just get like an eyedropper you know of the color you're like oh that's actually like really like a, a like a neutral yellow gray. It's not green kind of thing. And it was just really fascinating. It made me realize how when I talk about color a lot of times, I'm not talking necessarily about the true tone. If I were to like take it completely out of context, I'm really talking about it, you know, how it compares within context. Cause you know, the way that that color looks on my skin right now is just like kind of a warm brown. It is not reading purple shift blue <laughs> the way that it does in the pan. So, I was also, I talked to Gen C because they were like, oh gosh, we're really sorry that we sent you like the wrong color and like that your lip gloss was <laughs> faulty. Although we got a good laugh out of it. <laughs> oh, no! But they sent me taupe in the eyebrow mousse. So we'll use that. Still real heckin' pigmented. So you wanna be careful, but a much better shade for me than medium brown. I think they did say that they're working on a shade expansion as well. You know, they're a really new brand. Okay, I'm gonna use the Hindash Color Fluid in Thorn as my eyeliner. And then I'm gonna go in with, they sent me a new tube of this and I have to admit, I'm like really stoked on it again. And this is the Jones Road Mascara and it is just one of the highest performing, most beautiful clean beauty mascaras I've ever used, but like also just luxury mascaras I've ever used. It's just really beautiful. Even though it's black and like, I don't typically go for black mascara, especially with the Jones Road oat milk latte face of it all, you don't necessarily think of like a high impact black mascara as being an intuitive part of that kind of collection, but here we are and it's gorgeous. <laughs>
I'm sorry. All right, we need to decide what we want to do on the lips here. E, eh. I like even curled my hair today and then I just like put it back up because I am a loser lately. Okay, so can we talk about that mascara real quick? I know we've talked about it on my channel before, but if you've never seen it, holy potatoes. It's just, it's wonderful. It's wonderful stuff. I really, really like it. It was like sold out for ages because everybody freaking loves it. And it like holds a curl. It's not wildly heavy. It's not wildly wet. And it's also not what I mean, it, yes, it's pitch black. Like that's the name of the shade. But like, I don't think that it's, you know, like overwhelmingly pitch black. Lips. Okay. I am so stoked that I have all of these because it's like I can always find something in this collection to match with whatever look I'm going for and then like kick it up a notch. So like, yeah, I could go for something cool toned on my lips right now or just clear and like that would be fine. But because I keep doing the same damn look all the time, I at least wanna like enhance it with a different lip color here. So I have here one of the About Face lip butters, the Cherry Pick Lip Color Butters. And this happens to be in Nashi Pear. It even smells like peach, like peach rings. See? Y'all, I can't stop wearing peach makeup and I, I'm sorry, but I'm not like that sorry. Okay, let's chat prices real quick, but this is the vibe and I have to admit I'm really into it. This is very much the makeup that I am like going for on an everyday basis right now. And these are also products that I like enjoy interacting with, not just wearing, you know? Okay, the Miracle Bomb is $38. And I mean, you get just an absolute like lifetime supply, <laughs> you know? So if you like the shade, then it's going to be a very good investment because like I said, I really, while it didn't go with this face of makeup because of the actual consistency of the formula, this is so, incredibly beautiful on its own. I have been stoked to put this on on its own and it's completely changed my opinion of the Miracle Bomb, not in the sense of, oh, now I'm going to go repurchase Dusty Pink, but in the sense of they're not all the same. And there are ones that are more pigmented and more useful. And this one, Miami Beach, Miami Beach, Miami Beach. It's just exactly what I want to wear right now. And that brings me to, you know, the What the Foundation, which we have talked about before, is $44. I mean, I think that that's kind of a good price. I mean, it's luxury, clean beauty that I can't compare to anything else. It doesn't behave like anything else. And it really looks and feels like skincare. It's just, you saw the close up. It's really pretty. The one thing is, yeah, it starts to kind of get these little globs in it of the actual oils separating and solidifying and you just kind of have to break it down on the warmth of your skin it's gonna happen by just rubbing it into your skin anyway but then you do have to double check it a little bit and make sure you don't have any like globs stuck somewhere which might not be your ideal makeup application experience so i do want to present that in the utmost of reality but it's unique i think it's worth it i think it's like worth the extra possible like weirdness of that because it's just such a unique product and it's so skin loving it's so pretty you know and it just does so much more than the sum of its parts like my skin just feels fantastic i also think that like this is a really easy thing to dismiss or underestimate the little little pencils but really what this is is a, a fantastic concealer that's been put into a very modest package that doesn't have any waste. I mean, aside from, I guess, the plastic cap, which, you know, you can recycle, but I mean, it's it's wooden and that's really awesome. I think that these are easy to underestimate and they're really, really incredible, especially as something that, again, I have in my bag all the time. Like I have multiples of them and to be able to throw something in my bag, to be able to like touch up, they just really like, intuitively warms to my skin, especially when I'm thinking about it in the context of clean beauty concealers that think that they're gonna do that. What comes to mind is the Real Skin Plus stick from Chantecaille. I love almost all of their complexion products, that being the big exception because it really aims to be a 
everywhere, anywhere, touch up, blend with your fingers kind of complexion stick. And it grabs in lines and it's dry and it doesn't have a lot of cosmetic elegance or slip to it. It just doesn't perform for, especially for the price, but like for any price, it just doesn't really perform very well. And this is just on completely the other end of the spectrum. It's a far better price and it's really, greater than it looks. I just really like this and I have to admit that I underestimated it. Okay, so the bronzer's $35 and we need to talk expectations versus reality on this because I'm really, really glad that I had them send me both of these. I thought that Dusty Rose was going to like answer all of my prayers of a bronzer that really works on my skin. Turns out as basic white person TM, you know, fair neutral at the drugstore, it's actually light tan that works flawlessly on me. And this is actually for paler people than I even, or a blush, you know, for other people. It does only have seven shades and I do feel like the deepest shade doesn't go deep enough. Like I feel like they could really do some work there. But I do think that like it's a strange choice to make the fairest shade as pigmented as the formula is because it's going to be more difficult for a fair person to get an even application, you know, like an ultra fair person. For whatever reason, you know, I think that this just looks better with my skin. And so it's like an easier thing for me to apply. But like, if you're curious, how is this going to communicate with the rest of my Jones Road Beauty products that are in my collection and like still give me the vibes? You're right to have that question because it doesn't really. I almost feel like the, the collection is like bisected at this point. There is like the complexion products and the Miracle Balm. And then they get over into like the really beautiful, like the eyeshadows or the blush stick or the mascara. And suddenly you're back into like, makeup fill. I think that those two things can coexist in a lot of cases, but the things that cannot coexist are these two formulas. They just can't. That is like the answer to that question for me. It's like, how am I supposed to wear those two things together? You don't. The answer is you don't. And they do have blush in a stick that is more pigmented and less emollient. And I do feel like those two could be made to work together a lot more easily, but you're still up against the emollients of the what the foundation, in which case I would say that these are bronzers for bronzer people. These are not necessarily bronzers for Jones Road Beauty people. Cause it is a completely different mindset. It's a totally different approach when it comes to the What The Foundation than, than this. Because while they're gorgeous, they are not that Westman Atelier, you know, suede bronzer kind of feeling where it's like you take something and yeah, you pick it up and it's technically a powder, but it does blend seamlessly onto a cream face of makeup. Not the bronzers, not the Jones Road bronzers. I like them a lot, but I would not recommend using them specifically the way that I used them today because I feel like it was a little bit more difficult than it should have been. And I would have liked to see something that was more hybrid texture from them than a powder bronzer. And I'd be interested to see how she recommends using it, but I am here for good blending. And I feel like that's something that gets lost sometimes in clean beauty is just that, you know, we're supposed to kind of survive on vibes. And a lot of times that means that like the face of makeup ends up being a little bit kind of like messier looking. And I'm still, regardless of like, you know, the, the clean beauty mission of a brand or whatever, I still want a good blend, but like you're going to lose any kind of really good seamless blend. If you try and combine the powder bronzer with like the miracle bomb. Did my hair go flat? Did I step into some bad lighting? The mascara, I'm just still completely in love with. I really, really enjoy it. And I did have a complaint the first time where I was like, good luck washing it off. With the new makeup balm from Fortuna, it works great. I, I, like I said, I get it wet, you know, with a little bit of warm water and it becomes like a really, really, really effective solution for taking off my makeup. So I have not had an issue there with this. Now, when it matures in the tube, it's going to get like, what? how and it might get a little harder to remove so you know just bear that in mind it is a long wearing clean beauty mascara and it does quite thicken in the tube over time and it's really really gorgeous the one thing that can be a little bit difficult is just the removal like getting it completely out of your eyelashes so bear that in mind Plavado and albedo you know it was just me having to kind of like work it out out loud 
but what I couldn't put my finger on about these formulas was just kind of what made them so special to me, what kind of kept drawing me back to them, besides just this adorable packaging, honestly. Like, they did a really good job of making it, like, cool and, like, Gen Z friendly without making it look really dated. Like, it still looks timeless, and I recognize them in my collection. And the lids are all white, so like the lids are interchangeable. It's just the pans that have different colors. And there's something really charming about those sitting on your vanity or your table or whatever. There's just a really nice kind of visual of like the candy colors of all those together. I think that they made a lot of really cool choices. The thing that keeps drawing me back to these is the just wonderfulness of the formula. It has this fantastic like velvet finish to it. It feels like that same gel to powder suede finish that you get from the House Labs bronzer. I feel like it communicates with the warmth of your skin more so than like a lot of other eyeshadow formulas that I've used and it makes it special and I really really dig them and I also like that you know they have a lot of really intuitive shades. So the eyeshadows are $29 a piece. It's it's like upper end of prestige kind of pricing. I'll see if I can get like a discount code or anything. They might have already given me one. No, they did. They did. They did. It's shop my 20. Yeah. I think it's shop my 20. And if it's not, then I'll put it on the screen. Oh, I'll put it on the screen regardless. But yeah, I think you can get 20% off. Yeah. They, they wrote it on a card. I forgot about that. So yes, cool. I love the Hindash color fluids. That's not news. The Gen C is incredibly lovely now that it's in the right shade. I like it very much. I was a little bit cautious using it at first, but I ended up going into the second coat because it's just really, really pretty. I like it on its own. So that's their beautiful brow product. And I have taupe. That's the main thing that I wanted to emphasize. And then yeah, I just kind of want to leave y'all with one thought, and that is that, like, I really enjoy the direction that Jones Road is going in. I was curious when I first reviewed them whether it was something that was going to go so far in the direction of granola that they were going to kind of lose the plot, but it's Bobby Brown. She knows what she's doing. And even if the products don't necessarily always perfectly, like, jive with my pre-existing routine, I'm still following their future career with great interest, especially now that this has, this color Miami Beach has really stolen my heart and changed my opinion of what to expect from the Miracle Bombs. Like I'm re-interested in the Miracle Bombs now knowing that something like this exists because the color and the formula on a bare face is one of the prettiest things that I've ever put on. It's so pretty. I hope that this was fun and enjoyable for y'all. If you did enjoy this video, please do give it a thumbs up. It helps me out. If you made it all the way to the end and you're not yet subscribed, you should probably subscribe while you're here because we have a lot of fun. And I'll put a video here that I think that you're going to enjoy. And I love y'all so much. And I'll see you in the next one. Bye!